So, hello everyone. How are you doing? Good. 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 Yeah. So, um, today I'm going to speak about theme development with Nipper and Twig. Um, it will be a tech talk, so quite technological, but I'm sure most of you just get it. So, quick question. Who in here did uh, work with Timber uh, already? Okay, some people, not too much. Okay, good. Um, so, short thing about me. Um, I'm a software engineer and currently doing my bachelor thesis. And I'm, I've been working as a full stack developer with WordPress for over four years now. And um, I'm working for WebKit and Web Agency in Lucerne right now. Um, and in this September, I've become a tim Timber Core contributor. So I know what's going on right now. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me after my talk. So, what exactly is Twig? Um, Twig is a templating language for PHP. So what is a temp templating language exactly? Um, in a templating language, you just define placeholders which are afterwards filled out by data. So uh, by the programming language, so whether it would be PHP or Java or, or whatever you have, you just have these, those templates which will be filled out with the data you provided with. So, why should you use it? Um, it's less verbose to use than PHP for templating, so you just don't need to write um, echo, so PHP opening echo all the time, so that's pretty annoying to do, right? So, uh, Twig solved this by just using, because it's, it's made for templating, so not unlike PHP, which is made for coding in most of the cases. So it's shorter and better understandable than, than plain PHP. And what it also does, it separates uh, the code. So PHP will be separated from HTML and you don't need to, um, to have uh, some kind of mix-up from the codes there. And in the end, Twig is like PHP, it just outputs HTML at, at the very end. So. And now we need a second thing, because Twig just doesn't work right off the, off, out of the box with WordPress, right? So um, what we have there is Timber. So Timber is the integration of Twig and WordPress. So it provides us with some very cool data structures that we can use. So and, uh, most of you will know about the posts that, so uh, posts and pages. And what Timber provides us with are some very cool objects we can work with and also a standard, standardized way we can work with them. And also menus, we can work with users very easily. So I'm going to show you how right now. So, quick thing about why should one use it. Um, so, it's faster, so you, you can do the templating much faster than you would if you just had PHP. And the unified APIs to, uh, Timber provides us with, that, that you will going to work uh, much faster with that. So. And you have template inheritance, which PHP normally doesn't provide. Um, I'm going to show you an example of that later. This is a really, really um, good way to decouple um, your uh, templating from each other. I'm going to show you how in a minute. You'll have less code duplication with Timber and Twig. And front-end developers, they don't need to know how WordPress works. You can just provide them, they just need to know how Twig works. So you can just uh, say how it works for, for them, and they can build their uh, front-end apart from the backend developers who can then build the, the backend stuff. So that's also, uh, for bigger agencies, that's a, a very big plus for, for, to use Timber and Twig. And it, you will also have a better separation of concerns. So Timber is almost like a MVC approach. So you have your controller, which I'll show you afterwards. There you prepare all the data you need for the, for the view to work. And then you just have the view which renders all the data. So this is separation of concerns. So now we need to, pre to prepare the data, right? So um, in WordPress, you have uh, the pages and the posts. So these are the singular views. And this one is the single PHP. So for Timber to work, you use normal um, WordPress uh, 
the templates of WordPress. So in my case, it was the single.php, and you write the setup of the timber in there. So that's can you you can see that right on, on the right side. So the first thing we need to do is to get the global context of timber. Uh, you store global data in there, which I'm going to show you later, like menus, logos in the header, so stuff you just need on every site. Then you'll have page-specific code, which um, is uh, at the second line of code there. So you'll get the currently active post uh, with the second line, and then we'll write it in the context variable. And then we can output uh, the twig file with our data, which in this instance is the context. So, um, how does this look like, this twig file afterwards? This is one of the twig files, so we have the template here. So, what uh, you did see that we had a post uh, a variable that we used, and did, we can now use it here in, in twig as well. So, you would just write post.title, and this would output the title of the WordPress post. You could just write post.content and it will output the content of the post. So these are a very structured way and it's very easy to learn for front-end developers who are not familiar with uh, WordPress code. And um, you'll also have uh, other classes like terms, posts, and these are very unified, so you could just write term.title and it will get the title too. If you had not Word, uh, WordPress objects, this wouldn't work because it would be name. So the API there is different, but this unifies the APIs. So use cases for these are um, page rendering, as we can see it here, or you can also do just uh, component rendering. So if you have a separate component, you can use separate data to render out this component. And maybe you saw that, uh, the extents and the block. And I'm going to talk about this right now because this is one of the, of the coolest approach that Timber provides us with, Trigger uh, respectively. Oops. So, um, in most cases we'll have some kind of um, layout around the page that we want to render, right? So we'll have a navigation, we'll have a footer, we'll have a lot of stuff going on. Um, which is not the page. And we don't want to du duplicate all the, the stuff all the times. So what we can do is, like here, we can write a base.twig. I just call it like that, you can call it anything you want. And we can define blocks where, which can be overwritten then by the templates. So here, in my instance, I have a block content here. And as you saw in the template before, right here, um, this extends the base.twig and it has a block content. And what happens now is that this block content gets inserted right here into this main area. So that's how it works. Um, layouting is obviously a very good approach uh, or use case for this example, but you can also do uh, uh, stuff, you can just write down cards, so you to have a card with an image and you have another content. So let's say you have an image uh, in a card and then you have another card which has other content beneath it. You could just write a card uh, dot twig which has all the basic information like the image and then you can extend those cards to have another content in there afterwards. So, um, this is really cool because it avo avoids duplication and improves consistency of or, or for code. Um, so, now we need the global data. So, we just saw how we would render a page, but um, in WordPress context you need more, right? You need menus, you need footer data, you need a lot of stuff which could be outputted into the page afterwards. So what Timber provides us with is uh, the Timber context filter and what you can do there is output the data we need globally. So this data you write in there, this will be available globally because on each page you'll get the context right on, on the first line and there you'll have all the global data in it and you can access that in the template likewise you would 
do with a, with a variable you set here. So now how we can use that. So we just want to render a navigation now. That's our navigation here. So that's a really cool feature I like about Timber, one of the most liked feature for me because it's just so easy to do because I've spent hours uh, working with the Nav Walker of WordPress and it's just a pain to use to fit my needs. So what I can do here is just four items in, in this menu and I can just write down the, the markup code I need all, all by myself. And also recursively. So um, as you know, in WordPress, the, the menus, they can go down like three or four or even more steps. And what this here does, it is, this is the, the navigation.twig, and I, I can include that afterwards again, and it will do a recursive structure, and they'll have a menu which fits my needs. So use case for these is obviously navigations. And this is a really cool feature you should definitely, definitely try out. Um, images is another stuff which is very important for um, almost all uh, websites. So what we have here is I uh, got an image that would be an attachment in WordPress terminology and I just um, output an image. What I can do now is um, I can just use the resize filter that you see. So you, you just write pipe resize and I can just write down the, the, the dimensions that I want of the image. So in this, um, in this context, it would be 50 times 50 pixels. But you could just use anything you, you'd like there. And you can also convert images on the fly. So if you always need a JPEG or PNG or whatever, you could also use a filter for that. So this is really a, a powerful feature. We use it a lot. So we just generate all the necessary sizes we need and then you can also do responsive images with this feature, which is really cool. And then we have macros. Um, this is another concept, but not as used commonly. So you'll have the macro, and, which is a, basically like a function. It works like a function which outputs um, HTML code. So you would have, um, here in this instance, it would be an input which gets rendered. So it's very handy for form elements, but also I just wrote a responsive image macro. So we can just import this and um, output the responsive images on each side, even with different aspect ratios, and it will get generate all the sizes for us which we need for, for this to work. So this is uh, also a cool feature. And now we go a little bit deeper, uh, for those of you who have already worked with Timber. Um, so what you can do if... So Timber provides a basic Timber post implementation. Um, we can extend this if we want to. Like here in this example. So what I needed was um, I needed to work with WooCommerce and Timber. So I needed to integrate those two. And this doesn't work right out of the box because WooCommerce, it needs a product um, variable that I can work with. So what you can do is you can extend the Timber post uh, with product in this instance. And in my templates, I could now just write post, so I, that would be my post variable. And I can, could just access this product variable right in here. So I could write post.product.getPrice. And I would have the price of the product from WooCommerce. So this is also a, a handy feature if you want to implement WooCommerce. So, but you can also do other things, like if you wanted an event, you could write an event class, and you could use some methods to get the end date, to get the start date, to get the date um, with a dash in between. You could just write methods for all of, of those use cases. Um, what you need to, to be um, wary of is that when you do timber get posts, you need to translate, to, uh, like to say what class is used for this post. So you need to write product double point, double point class to get it in this format. Otherwise you'll just end up with a post. So you need to, to tell timber how it should get the data. 
So, um, if you now got a sense of how it works, how could you use that? So, um, our preferred method to install it is as a Composer package. Um, but you can also do it um, on two ways if you use Composer. You could um, install it as a plugin via Composer or via library. So, this is up to you how you want to do it. Um, you can have a look at the starter theme, which is on GitHub, um, which will be um, developed further now. We have got some new um, um, ideas, what we want to do. And you could also install it as a normal WP plugin. But this will be probably deprecated for Timber 2.0, as we don't want people to break their sites when they just hit the update button from the plugin. So, but we'll see how, how that works out. So, future prospects, uh, how, where are we going? So, Timber 8, 1.8 was released uh, two weeks ago, um, featuring a web WP support. Um, I know, don't know if you know it, it, that's a new image format which you can use to, to get images like 20% uh, smaller than JPEGs. So, have a look at that if you want. And also many bug fixes which we did. Uh, so that, that was, um, will fix many bugs you may have encountered. And now Timber 2.0 is currently under active development on GitHub, so have a look there. And it will have a better compatibility with third-party plugins, so this is our, one of our main concerns, that it does not perfectly work with some page builders, and we'll see how, how uh, we can integrate those better in, in um, Timber. It will have a lot of internal code improvements, um, restructuring and stuff, and also the developer API will be improved, so it will be easier to work with and more, um, more generalized and more standardized. And it will probably also see the deprecation of Timber as a plugin from uh, WordPress.org. Also, the Timber start Starter theme will be updated uh, for 2.0, so have a look there at um, how we upgraded this, and it will also feature improved documentation as a whole. Good, so I'm at the end. Um, I can show you some of the code. I have five minutes left, as I saw, so we can just have a look at the Timber Starter theme. So, um, this is it. You can find it on GitHub. Um, here we have it. And just have a look at it. So, now we have um, the signal.php file, which I talked about earlier. Can you zoom in a bit? Yeah, I can. Okay. Good. Um, so, that's one of the sing signal.php file that you see here. And now can, I can also show you the template file, which is here, um, single.twig. And now here you can see a, a bit more of an extended version of, of the single.twig. So, so we'll, the single.php calls this file. Exactly. Yeah, you know, that, that, that's what I meant by um, you, the, you use normal uh, WordPress files, mm -hmm. the template files as you know them, single.php, index.php. And you render the twig file from there. That's what, what basically happens. And so he, here you see an extended version, and you see also the nice use of the resize filter here. So this will just resize the image to 1200 1, to uh, 300, and we'll, this will do it automatically. And you also see poster title, that just gets the title. Uh, Posted author, that will get the author of the post. Um, post.content which out outputs the, the posts and you can also access the comments as you see here if post.comments and you can um, output all the comments which you have on the post so these are it's really standardized and very easy to use even for non-wordpress um, people so you can see that I guess I'll show you um, another one um, so we will have um, page.php um, so here we get the post the currently active post we set it to the context 
and render a Twig file here, right here. And now I can show you the accompanying Twig file, which is here, page.twig. And this works exactly the same. So post the title, post dot content, and also the index files works like that. So what we can do here is just uh, write for post in posts, and we can just have a loop of all the posts which are in this uh, index. Pascal, could you maybe explain the syntax with the array? Uh, sorry, which one? That includes that you're using an array. Oh yeah, that's um, it. Will look for uh, tees dot uh, Sorry, tees uh, minus post type dot twig. It will look for this if it if it's there, and if it's not, it'll, it will fall back to tees dot twig. That's just what happens there in syntax. Yeah. And you also have the pagination right here at the bottom, um, which is also very easy to use if you want to. So it respects uh, the hierarchy of the WordPress. Uh, yeah, it respects the, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, um, you use the normal WordPress templates, and you only use them to set up all your data, and then you, you just render the Twig file from there, exactly. But it, it's the normal uh, WordPress template. And rendering the Twig file is more, is faster than rendering a PHP file. No, this will no, no, that's not um, no. that's not the case. But mm -hmm. you can just um, if you want to, you can uh, have the Twig file to compile to PHP. Mm -hmm. So you can have you can have this if you want to, and then it's as fast uh, as PHP, obviously, because it's just PHP. Yeah. yeah. So no, yeah. How is it for building for clients? Is it really quicker? Because yeah, when you get used to Echo and all yeah. Stuff, uh, so okay. most probably I, I'm twenty to even more percent faster than using the normal um, WP because I can use all um, I can access all the HTML I want to, and normally it's just a bit. Um, so for example, the, the navigation is a really good example of making it really much easier to work with than normal WordPress. Yeah. Are oh, they like very easy? So I, I see this one is based on underscore, mm -hmm. but this is based like on style style exactly. themes with maybe like other stuff like bootstrap or things like this. Well it's pretty easy to do yourself if you want that to so what you need is in bootstrap is for example the navigation and you can just write it that very very easily um, yourself if you want that. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, compared to maybe um, uh, Sage, which is another yeah. very famous. Yeah. Have you tested both? Like, did you make the choice because um, you thought it was better? I used uh, Timber and Twig before. Um, they used so I worked with Sage a, a long time ago, and now they just changed to a, a blade, I think. Yeah. But I haven't checked this one out yet. Yeah. But you see no limitations in, in, in this one? In yeah, this no, there's, one. there's no limitation right now. And uh, many people are working on it uh, to improve it and stuff. So that's how I know it. And in the Sage, there is very much, uh, much magic going on sometimes, which I don't know um, how it works. Okay. So that's what, yeah, why I don't use it at the moment. But it's, it's, it's got very cool features too, for sure. But you would say this one is maybe a, a bit simpler. This is really simple. This is magic. basic stuff. Mm -hmm. And I actually, or start a theme, I started with that. Um, I just um, included all my changes I wanted. And now we have a custom uh, theme which we, we're using, which is based on this one, which is really uh, much easier to, to understand. And you can make it more complex if you want to, sure. Any other questions? <coughs> Um, for, I guess, many of us use uh, Asens custom fields a lot. Yeah. Maybe it's going to change with Gutenberg, I don't know, but uh, so what's, what's going to happen with Twig? That's really easy to do because there's an integration of this in uh, Timber and Twig. Um, so if you need a field, you can just write post dot the field name and you'll have the data from there. Or you can, if you need, sometimes um, you need more data, then you can write post.get field and your field, and you're done. You, you have your data from, from Asia. So, very, very easy to do. 
And so about Gutenberg, the, I guess the team is already working on trying to adapt something, or is the country change nothing, maybe? Um, it's, I'm not too sure about it, and the answer will be pretty long and not, <laughs> not okay, okay. to the next <laughs> one minute. <laughs> okay, we are all lost. I think, I, think, but you can, I think the Gutenberg editor, as it's planned by court, the court team, I think is kind of the content is already there, it's actually in the content of exactly. the object, so Timber is just like, yeah, output, just, just done, the just output, output the content. Yeah. Yeah. So there will be some changes, maybe, but, well, it, it, Gutenberg is not all, because all there, so... You code your template in the Gutenberg um, Yeah, so the, plugin now, Gutenberg so. just will output it in, in the mm -hmm. post.content, and yeah. so that's what happens. And as long as it is not front-end, uh, there will be... Well, it will be a long time until it is also front end uh, uh, good in there. <coughs> the, the possibility to, to, to uh, collect data and to enter data from the front end side. Uh, as long as it isn't it really So uh, there are no planned changes at the moment because we just don't need to at the moment. The but if there is anything we can do, just uh, open an issue and we'll have a look at it, sure. I'm convinced we can try it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, so I'm at the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for having me.